Hello everyone. Happy Sunday. Thank you much. Thanks so much for coming in tonight. Thanks replay viewers for being here. And thank you YouTube viewers for watching. If you'd like to come in and watch live on Periscope, download the Periscope app, search for Penguin and Fish, and join me every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. All right, guys, it is Sunday. That means it's New Black Day. Uh, we're starting Block 53 of the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. So I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll get going. Hey there, guys. Happy Sunday. It's New Block Day for the Splendid Sampler uh, Quilt Along. Uh, if you want more info on that Quilt Along, it's at thesplendidsampler.com. It's completely free for right now, and uh, it's mystery quilts or mystery blocks, and we get a new block every Thursday and Sunday, and it's new block day Sunday. So look at this, it's block 53, what's it called, I can't read it in reverse, Whirling in Circles by Deb Roberts. So it has this little pinwheel in the center of the star, uh, and she has a really interesting way of doing her flying geese that I've never done before, so we'll see how that goes, I'm going to give that a try. Um, and uh, that's the plan for the night, guys. Um, oh, and just so you guys know, I'm not going to be here tomorrow or Tuesday. Tomorrow we're going to go to the park and watch uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones. Oh, no, no, no. The Last Crusade. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That's the best one. I love that one. Uh, and they're showing it outside, so we're going to go hang out in the park and watch that. And then also on Tuesday is our wedding anniversary, so I'm going to be going out to eat and watching a movie. So I won't, be, I won't be here Monday, tomorrow, or Tuesday, just to let you guys know. So let's... I'm going to try and get as far as I can on this vlog, because we'll just have today and Wednesday to work on it. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully we can get pretty far. We'll see. I think this interesting flying uh, geese technique might make things go a little faster. So I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer. And I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central, except for tomorrow and Tuesday. Oh, thanks. That's super sweet of you. Uh, it's going to be 13 years this year, which is crazy. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will get going. Oop, there we go. Okay, I got my fabrics here. Another night of chilling with the girls, exactly. <laughs> all right, so here's my plan, and I think I'm going to actually draw it out a little bit here. I know 13 years. All right, so I want to do the background in this teal color, which is the kitties. And you know what? I'm going to color it in right away. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you guys are sweet. So I'm just going to add a little color on here just so I know what I'm doing. Uh, I, want, I want all of this background stuff to be this kitty. I think that'll be kind of cute. And then I'm also going to make this these triangles the kitty as well because then it'll be look kind of see-through I think I don't know I thought that would be kind of cute all right and then for these other um the star parts I'm going to use this kind of pixelated color uh fabric you know I don't usually do this where I color in everything but for some reason tonight I didn't want to label everything like when I when I saw this I'm like oh that's that's a lot to label I didn't want to make my little list so I'm like you know what I have my colored pencils I'm going to just drop in some color here quickly so this one let's see I'm doing a darker blue all right so this is kind of like a medium blue that's going to be the pixelated bits and here I'll, I'll even throw in there those are those are my pixels <laughs> because uh, I got those little red pixels in there. Okay, and then I wanted to do red for the the uh, little pinwheel that we can see, so I just, this is pink, but I guess this is, this looks kind of pink from far away. So I thought this might be kind of fun. Then it'll have like this, this, uh, 
little tiny red pinwheel, and then uh, you'll have like this kitty cat uh, teal pinwheel. And uh, yeah, you know what? It's it's uh, it's red. If you look really close here, it's actually a bunch of red zigzag lines on white fabric. So technically, it, I mean, it, it's it's red printing, but because it, it's so thin and it's next to the white, it looks it looks pink. All right, and then this last these last squares or triangles, I'm gonna make this really dark blue. So let's just get those in. All right, so this is this is gonna be my look. So I'm kind of wondering now if I should switch these two, but I think I think at this point I'm just gonna leave it. That's what it's gonna look like, just like that. Yeah, because if I made this dark, then this would look like a, a shape, and I, I don't want that to look like a shape. Yeah, it does actually look pretty like a salmon color, you're right. All right, so there we go. All right, now I'm ready to actually start here. So I'm just using four colors. So another thing that I wanted to try and do, after I uh, laid out my 50 blocks, like the first 50, I noticed that I didn't have as much blue as I wanted to, so that's why I have a lot of blues uh, hanging out again, but I thought I'd just do a little contrasting color for, for just that center little pinwheel. But yeah, I'm trying to, trying to get back to my fabrics, back to the blues, because I wanted a, an overall blue type quilt. Alright, so we got some pretty specific measurements this time, and I think it's because we got this fancy way of doing flying geese. So uh, flying geese is where you have a rectangle with um, two triangles. So like, like that right there is a flying geese block. This rectangle with these two corner triangles. But check this out. So this is how we're going to make them. We're going to have uh, our A piece, which is, you know, all of these pieces here, and a bunch of these F pieces. We're kind of going to do what we do when we do half square triangles, but we're going to do like two at once, which will make our flying geese. So it's kind of weird. So look, so we, we put them in the corners and draw a line down the center, and then we sew our scant quarter on either side, then press them so they're out all goofy-like, and then we put another one there. I know, it's kind of confusing, isn't it? Why is the one side of the V longer than the other? Oh, like like this part? It's just because that's the top uh, part. <laughs> More keys. All right, so yeah, it is a little confusing. I think I get it. I've never done this before, but I think I, I think I understand it. So that we're gonna for sure do this tonight after we get done cutting some things. You know, maybe we'll even just, if, if it looks like time's going quick, maybe we'll just cut our A shape and our F shapes just to get that part done. I think maybe we'll just do that anyway. All right, so, and you'll see we have some pretty interesting measurements here, and I think that's because we have to do all this uh, really interesting thing. So I'm going to be pretty strict on, on these measurements this time. So the measurement for the F square is 2 and 3 eighths inch, and then the A square is 4 and a quarter. So uh, we're going to do that. Easy and fast. Okay, that is what I want to hear. That's what I thought was going on. This was some magic, easy and fast, magical trick. So I'm going to hope that's the case. <laughs> so I'm going to get my uh, my iron over here, and we're going to just, uh, I'm going to press these. I, I, uh, last time we did a block like this with all of these tiny triangles in the center, I had so much trouble with my machine like really pushing all my corners down so I'm gonna really I think that might have been that might have been the block right before I started using starch so now I'm gonna I'm just gonna really get the starch working for me this time so look I, I don't have too much of this fabric left but that's good I'm using up fabric that's what this project's for right so I'm using the best press, which is the strongest, uh, the strongest starch that I have currently. All right. Get this going. 
I want uh, nice starch pieces for this with all these uh, flying geese and triangles and and you know we're gonna end up with all those tiny little parts in the center that are they're gonna actually be sewn on the bias which is the stretchy diagonal of um, diagonal uh, grain of a fabric which is really stretchy so uh, I, I do want to make sure that I get get this pressed I think it's just a little a little wet yet. So I put some of that flatter starch in to my best press and it makes it smell so good. All right, and then this piece I got, this is a still a pretty large piece. <laughs> Cleaning house is messing into crafting time. I hear ya. That's what I did today too. I, uh, um, I cleaned the basement a little bit and I'm way not done with it yet, but I'm getting there. I know, isn't this cute? I love this fabric too. It's just so fun. So I'm going to assume that I can get my piece out of here. I think it was four and three eighths. I'm thinking I can get it from right here. Oh, it smells so good, this flatter, the flatter starch that I put in here. I think the, I put this, uh, the pink one, the celebration. So yeah, celebration. This is the, I put a little bit of this in my best press and it, just so nice. It's kind of, I would wear it uh, as perfume actually. It's, it's just like refreshing and, and nice. All right, so I think, I think this is what we're going to do. We are just going to get our fabric ready for, for those flying geese because I want to just jump ahead to that. I'm curious to see how that goes. So let's, let's cut that. So the A piece, it looks like we just need one and that's going to get us all the pieces I, you know what? I could start starching my clothes. Ugh, that sounds like work. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but you're totally right. I mean, I'm lucky if I get them hung up <laughs> and off the floor. Yeah, they're off the floor, but I'm, I have a load of laundry going right now. I wonder if you would just spray some in there. That would be nice. Uh, we're working on the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. Uh, it's a free quilt along, and there's more info at thesplendidsampler.com. All right. Our A square is four and a quarter inch, so let's let's start there. That's what I want to cut out of here, and I think I can get it out of this little kitty piece here. Um, I think I'm gonna just try using it with uh, with this six inch ruler. So let's let's first see if I have enough. So one, two, three, four. Ooh, if I go right here, I couldn't I couldn't sneak in any further. Oh, lavender sachets in the drawers. Mmm, I like that idea. I might have to do that. My parents are growing lavender and they have just a ton. So maybe I can snake some lavender. All right, this is a nice size scrap. Four and a quarter. All right, let's turn it around, and so now we're we're all squared up, and now we can do that. <laughs> Grandma used to do that. Now you know why. That's awesome. Okay, four and a quarter. So one, two, three, four. Uh, but we actually this is a half, so I have to go down a quarter on each side, like that. One, two, three, four, and a quarter. Okay, I think we are good right there. Let me get this fabric out of the way though. I don't want to cut, cut that. Oops, and I just stretched it a little. I think we're good. Okay. Mmm, lavender and chocolate chip cookies. You know, I'm not sure if I like lavender in food all that much though. Oops. My mom and I were having this discussion when, when we were at home because they just went to this uh, big lavender farm and they were selling everything with lavender in and uh, she was saying how she didn't really like it, um, all the lavender flavored things and she had some lavender car caramel corn and we both like love caramel corn. We hardly ever have it but oh man, love the caramel corn. But it was with uh, lavender and all you could taste was the lavender, but this like soapy, it was almost soapy. And then, but it had the perfect crunch and 
sweetness of caramel corn, but it just tastes soapy. And then towards the end, it kind of had like a pretty flowery taste, but you had to get past the soapiness first. And you, oh, yep, soapy, okay. And it wasn't um, caramely at all. There was no caramel flavor. It was only that lavender flavor, so it's pretty strong. Okay, so we got, well, we just need one of these. I'm gonna feel bad cutting up all these kitties. They're cute. Okay, next. All right, so here is the, um, the two and three eighths squares. And I actually don't have a lot of this fabric. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna cut, how much do I have actually? I have about seven inches worth, so. I think I'm going to, let's see, I'm just going to cut a strip, maybe two strips here that are two and three eighths. Let's see how much, how big that is. Ooh, I might need to, oh yeah, here we go. I was like, I might need to use a different ruler, but down here I have an eighth and eighth inches. So two and three eighths is about that wide. So I think I can still only get two out. So all right, I'm going to cut two strips that are two and uh, three eighths. I could go this way too, but then I'm I'm trying to figure out how to have enough fabric left over to use for other projects, but or for other blocks. But I think I'm going to just cut. I'm going to cut two this way, and then we'll cross cut. And I'm going to have a lot extra, but I'll just have to use that for a scrap for something else. So, all right, let's start with a nice straight edge here. I'm going to start over a little further because I'm going to have to get my ruler in here. All right, two and three eighths. So here's our nice edge. Okay. Two and three eighths. It's just shy of two and a half. All right, there we go. You know, maybe I'll cross cut this one first before cutting the other one. But I think I'll only be able to get three at the most. So I'll just cut the other one. Never mind. Do both at once. Okay, two and three eighths. And a second two and three eighths. Okay, that looks good, I think. Great. I'm a little off the cutting board here, but I think we'll be fine. All right. There we go, and I only have this much of my pixely fabric left. I, I only started out with a fat eighth of this, so I didn't actually really start out with a whole lot of it. Okay, and we got, you know, we're gonna have extras with scraps. So now we gotta do the two and three eighths squaring it up. So I'm gonna just stack these all nice. Scratch the kitty so they Line up a little bit, moves a little. You just need it to move a little bit instead of lifting up your fabric and trying to move it. You just scratch it a little bit like you're scratching a kitty. All right, let's square this up. By just putting it on one of the lines here. <laughs> yeah, meow. All right, now we got a nice edge. All right, I'm gonna flip around. So we just need uh, four of these, and I, and I have a stack of two here, so we just need to make two cuts. All right, so two and three eighths. That's half. Two and three eighths. All right, that looks good. All right, here are our first two squares. I like that one, that's pretty. And two and three eighths. Okay, I think that's a good one. 
two and three eighths. Good. Yeah, I, I guess I wouldn't have been able to get a third one out of there. This is, these are both too, too small. So I do have uh, two little scraps left. Uh, I'll definitely be able to use those for another project, another uh, block, I think. But here we go. All right, so we have all our pieces. Now let's attempt this little magic trick of, uh, of sewing they got going on here. So, okay. Let's, wow, that's really bright. Let's, uh, let's read the instructions. Select the four and a quarter inch square A and four of the, these guys, F. Draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of all of these. Okay, so let's start there. We're just gonna go in order and do exactly as it says. How about that? <laughs> all right, let's grab, um, grab this little ruler. I got my pencil here. You don't have to mark it with anything special. We're gonna actually cut along this line, I think. So um, it's actually not gonna end up being all that visible. I'm excited to see how this pans out. I've kind of seen this in pictures before um, for, you know, like every once in a while I'll Google how to do flying geese or how to do the math for triangles for flying geese and, and uh, half square triangles and all that. Uh, if I need to look up something and someone's always got some interesting trick or tutorial on how to do triangle type things like fly flying geese and half square triangles. So I think I've seen this technique on like a blog or something somewhere, but I've never tried it ever. And I'm kind of excited about it. It does seem like this is a way to speed up this process, which would be awesome because you know, sometimes we're here for like a day and a half making all these, these uh, triangles and stuff. But this seems like we'll get it done real quick. Oh, I'm gonna have fresh clothes tomorrow. That's awesome. <laughs> I've been doing laundry all day, so I have laundry on the braid and ooh, fresh sheets tonight. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, <laughs> that might have been a, a little TMI. Okay, uh, pin. Oh man, pin. I don't like that word. Pin a uh, two and three a square f on opposite corners of square a. So a quarter inch on both sides of the line. I am thinking we probably don't need pins, but you know what? I might as well, if I put pins way out on the side, I think we'll be fine. So, all right, I'm putting that there. Uh, pin a three, uh, two and three quarter square on opposite corners. All right, I just want to read it to make sure. I mean, in theory, I, I would just follow the pictures, but I want to read it too, because I've never done this technique before, so I want to, I want to see it and I want to read it to see if I can understand it. All right, this is helpful because I can connect my, my diagonal lines. I can connect, I can see where they line up. Okay, so I am going to pin those, but I'm going to pin them way out here so they don't interfere with my sewing and I can just keep sewing in theory. So I'll put one there and one here, and then I'm, I'll put them on the other side too. So I'm hoping I can sew both sides without these pins getting in my way. Keeping them from stabbing me and having to start and stop to pull them out. Okay, there we are. We are pinned, lined up. Uh, so a quarter inch on both sides of the line. Okay. So I'm guessing that's our typical kind of scant quarter. Okay, here we go. Ooh, I gotta change my settings from last night. All right, let me just trim this a little bit. Look, I, I um, I put all my scissors, I got this cool little bowl. I used to have, um, you know, I, I did that video recently of organizing all my floss. I, this was full of floss and now it's not. And look, I have all my cutting materials in here and it's so quick. 
to grab the scissors I need and or the rotary cutter and stuff. It's kind of my new favorite thing in, in this immediate area here. All right, I'm just trimming this off so it's not crazy, my, my uh, leader and ender here. All right, let's get this going. I want to just double check this too because I haven't sewn on this since last night. Let's, uh, I'm trying to get you guys so it's not so bright by the sewing machine. Here, let's. Yeah, that helped a little bit, I think. Okay. All right, I think we're fine. I'm just gonna get this up here right away. All right, so I'm just going to align. This is my my uh, business card here. Does um, this is my scant quarter. Do you have a shelving for your craft area? I feel like I need some. Um, you know, I, I have in my, um, office, which is a bedroom in the house here, I have lots of shelves and, and stuff, but here where I'm doing my periscopes in the evenings, I am doing them on the kitchen table. So I have, um, I just kind of shush it all to the side over here. I can actually show you. It's, it's pretty horrible, but here's a... Oops. There, there's all, oops, sorry guys. There's all my crap. <laughs> I have a microphone and a camera because I'm trying to work on um, getting the twitches going, but those are my binders for blocks uh, one through 50. There's my to-go craft box, scissors, bunch of pile of stuff underneath there, uh, you know, fabric, um, scraps. So that's, that's my, uh, that's what I got going on here for periscopes, and then if I need something special that I don't don't have over here, um, then I just go get it. And then I store. I'm sorry, I'm gonna flip you guys around again. Then I have my um, my iron goes there, and I got my jean quilt is still in the corner there, and there's a pile of thread, a case of thread over there, and a whole pile of unfinished projects on the shelf that's behind this chair here, <laughs> and then. Then, then cookbooks. <laughs> so the basement has a lot of crafting stuff in. <laughs> Poor girl's never seen horror before. You know, I do try and keep it. I do try and keep my stuff pretty clean and organized. And I've, I've been actually, you know, I, I'm still going through all that. KonMari, uh, life-changing magic of tidying up. And I, I consistently... Uh, keep my craft stuff in as as line as I can. Yep, Betty Cracker cookbook. Alright, let's get this guy up here. Oh, yeah. You know, I actually, uh, I think I did a I did a blog post about that a, a little while ago. My my biggest tip is to not even focus on organizing organizing um, your space. I I focus on organizing the projects and um, like like materials. So like you know like just how I just showed you my scissors that I have all my scissors together. Um, like just keeping, keeping like together and then organizing by project. So I keep all my projects in, they're all contained in different containers. So all I need to do is grab it and they're ready to go. And usually I have all the supplies I need to, like an extra scissors if I have one thrown in there and, and all that. But after that, if you can get all your kind of all your projects each in their own thing and then get your like materials and like tools together where you can see them and they're pretty if, if you do those two things then you're um, you know you're gonna be pretty much organized I think at that point all right there we go so we did the whole sewing on on both sides and I think now is where the magical stuff starts so, all right, we, uh, 
I'll take the pins out, but we had that line down the middle of both of these two squares and I lined them up in the center here. So it looks like one big line. And, um, you know, kind of like we, like when we're doing like big half square triangles, we do the line and then draw and stitch on either side. We just did it with these two little squares. Um, now I think we're gonna just cut along this. It's like we're making double half square triangles. It's just kind of funny. I'm kind of excited about this. The trick is that, um, so far is that I think that that measurement is really important. That three ace. All right. Let's. Is this big enough? Hopefully. Let's cut along that line. Let's. Okay. Cut and draw line. I just wanted to read it. I was just looking at the photos again, but I wanted to. I wanted to read it. Okay. So cutting on the drawn line just means cutting at the diagonal, on the diagonal. Okay, so now we have like the starts of these funny things here, like, like little bunnies or something. Okay, press triangles away from background fabric. All right, it doesn't say what side the seam allowance should go on, but let's assume it's the darker. I'm gonna just do it this way. All right, I'm gonna tilt you guys up. Let's see if I can shimmy this over here. All right, so I'm keeping the triangles on the top, just pressing it, and I'm gonna finger press them over. one at a time. We're on the bias now, which means the diagonal of the fabric. So um, I'm trying to push them both over, but it's bending the fabric, the kitty fabric's bending a little. And I kind of want to avoid that. So I'm, I'm pressing them one by one to get it going. And then I can go on both. Okay, this half is done. Look at it, isn't this funny? This is so goofy what we're doing. So there's, there's our first contraption. And uh, here's the second one. Just finger pressing it quickly. This is funny. Um, I could see if you had to do a whole quilt of flying geese how something like this could make the process go a whole lot faster. All right, there, now I got a good press on this one, I think. Let's see what's next. Press triangles away from background block. We did that. Pin a two and three a square D. Oh. Oh, square D on the Oh, I think I'm, wait, press triangles away from black. I think this is supposed to be, I think this is supposed to say, I think this is a typo. I think uh, this is supposed to say F still here. Um, Cause D is the two inch square that we put in the corner. Um, I, I'm thinking they're meaning, um, so if you guys were confused here, I, I think they mean, I think they mean F. So pin a uh, two and three ace square F on the corner background blocks. So a quarter on each side, cut down the line. Okay, yeah. From your email, I went to the link. Oh, yes! So yeah, he's actually working on that right now in his office. Um, he's working on the final, he's in the final uh, coloring stages of it. And there's some special effects stuff. But yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be done soon and soon it'll uh, hopefully be in the festivals and stuff. I almost, I almost sewed this like, with, without right sides together. Connecting threads website includes this method with photos. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, they do a good job. So, all right, so now I have the, the pencil diagonal line here. I'm not sure I really need to pin this one. And this is so funny because uh, this line's going like way over the edge, but I guess we're sewing over here. Do I have to pay attention to where it meets? I'm not sure. We're just gonna do it. 
So I'm going to put that there, and I guess we just sew on either side of this. So let's just let's just give it a try. It's so funny. All right. I didn't pin. I'm not going to pin this time. Uh, sew a quarter inch on both sides of the line. All right, that's what our plan is. That doesn't look right back here. Oh, I think I was just getting stuck. All right, there we go. I'm concentrating on my straight line. <laughs> All right, let's let's get this guy back here. Purple hearts. That's cool. Okay, so there's our first side. It was being a little funny on the outset here, but I think our tension looks good. I guess I didn't check my tension after last night messing around with the tension, but I think we're I think we're good. I think we can go a little tighter. Forgot to, forgot to check that. All right, so let's do this other side. I'm gonna get this guy out for that. So let's finish this one before sewing the other, just because I want to see it. I want to see it finished and in action. We'll just do it right here. Okay, so here we go, and it, it looks like we just cut on the drawn line. So, all right, I can do that. Oops, you know what? I did not cut this guy off. I like the chocolate arts. They're all nice and yummy. Okay, on the diagonal. All right, let's see if we got a flying geese here. Okay, that looks good to me. <laughs> so, great. So that was kind of a clever way of making uh, the flying geese. Let's let's do the other one, and then we'll press these. And man, we're done with that part. Then we can uh, cut our other pieces up. I think well, that's exciting. Cutting and sewing in in the night. Usually, uh, usually these blocks that look super intricate like this. Sometimes we only get get through the cutting, but we got this whole fancy. We're gonna get on to page two yet tonight. <laughs> funny. You know, maybe we all, maybe we will only need, only need one more day to do this. That'd be cool. On Wednesday when I'm here again. Oh, if you guys came in late, just uh, to let you know, I'm not going to be here tomorrow or Tuesday this week. So no Monday and no Tuesday scopes. Um, this is so funny. Oh, it's just getting caught in the machine here. Um, so Tomorrow, they're having at the um, at the Guthrie Theater, or not at the Guthrie Theater, but a park outside of there, just in this really pretty area of town. It's right on the river, uh, but they're going to be playing outdoor an outdoor movie. They're going to be playing uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which is my favorite one. So we're like, we need to go see that outside. <laughs> A summer movie, summer movie in the park type deal. So we're going to go see that tomorrow. And then uh, Tuesday is my husband and my 13th wedding anniversary. So we're going to be going out to eat and watching a movie. I think we're going to see Pete's Dragon. <laughs> Which will just be cute and sweet. And I think we both... Uh, like Pete's Dragon. I remember watching it a lot when I was little. We had it on our 
on VHS. I think we recorded it from TV on VHS, so it has like all the old like eighties commercials and stuff in it too. Uh, so I don't know. I think we're both a little attached to it. I, I I couldn't actually tell you a whole lot about the story though anymore. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I know I remember I liked it when I was little. <laughs> so we're gonna go see Pete Stragan and go out to eat for our anniversary at a place that I haven't haven't been in town here. Farm Farm and Stable, I think is what it's called. Oh wow, thirty second! Congrats, that's pretty incredible. Yep, so th hey, I wasn't, uh, we were looking at the calendar and we were like, oh, sheesh, we got that going on, so. No, no scoping. Oh, <laughs> oh you're funny. <clears throat> all right, let's get all these flying geese. Oh, you just had your 30 seconds too, wow. Oh, wow, 44 views, that's incredible. All right, so I got this flying keys going. Oh, 30, man. Everyone's got good anniversaries coming up. Yeah, we didn't do anything uh, too big this year. We're just doing a dinner and a movie, but we um, it's it's around our birthdays. So like my birthday is early July and his is early August and then our anniversary is kind of early August. So, uh, uh, you know, we went to New York for my birthday and that was kind of, that was kind of our birthday slash anniversary time, <laughs> like big, big thing. So, so just a dinner and a movie, but we also are doing that, uh, uh, the thing tomorrow, which I'm, I'm considering tomorrow, um, part of the, the anniversary, getting to see, uh, Raiders of the Lost, not Raiders of the Lost, but Last Crusade. Oh, today's your birthday! Happy birthday! But yeah, that's the one with uh, Sean Connery and stuff, the third one. That's the one I've seen the most, and I really like that one. I haven't seen it, I haven't watched uh, Indiana Jones in a while, too, so it'll be super duper fun. But oh my god, the mosquitoes have been so bad lately, I'm gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to bring tons of bug spray. That's exciting. So did you, did you do anything fun for your birthday? It's nice that it fell on a weekend. All right, this is our last one here. Um, you know what, I, I'm gonna trim these down right away probably because they have all their, they have their little dog ears on you or their cat ears. <laughs> Aw, yeah, that's nice. This is where the party's at. <laughs> Should have had a little cake here. That would've been fun. All right. Flying geese! Oh, look at this. This one's got like a little kitty sticking out of it. That's the only one you can really tell that there's a cat. Oh, there's some, get some kitty feet going around in there too. I just kind of like the color. I'm doing it for the color for, for this one. Oh, but look, we're starting to get, get the look of our thing. That's exciting. Boop. Ah, I love it already. I'm excited. Yay. Okay, so uh, cut to the drawn line, flying geese. We did that. Oh, it doesn't say anything about trimming it down. So, you know what? In that case, I'm going to just trim these down by hand. I'm kind of curious what the size is, though. It should be something that makes sense. Like, if these are two inches, then they're going to end up being one and a quarter? No, I don't know. It's too late to think numbers. Let's just measure. All right, so yeah, so this is gonna be, it's two inches, Ugh, there we go. Two inches by three and a half inches. Oh, size of business card. All right, so let's just, I'm gonna actually just trim it down to that, the two inches by three and a half, just so that they're all nice and clean because that's what we've learned <laughs> or I've learned with the, the splendid sampler here is like getting these just like the precision of it all so let's just be precise while well, we got them all out here I 
haven't done I haven't uh, squared up subunits in a while, but I think this is just right. Just the right black to do it with. When I saw this block, I was like, I got a little nervous because it looks it looks a whole lot like that block that I had so much trouble with. I mean, not so much trouble. It wasn't traumatizing, but it it was like the hardest block that that I did here. Um, it was that one that was a lot like this actually, with that little kind of pinwheel thing on the inside. And it, man, I I had trouble with that one. As far as uh, this, I'm gonna do it this way as far as all the little pieces. But like I said, I think that was the one right before I started using starch. And, uh, cause I was like, eh, do I really need to do this starch thing? And, but it's been helpful for sure. Especially for triangle things. All these triangle things, you're dealing with the biases so much of the time. And just to show you, you know, just kind of what that means. So, you know, if I'm pulling this way, the thread, the threads go this way and this way. So if I pull this way, it doesn't move much. If I pull this way, it doesn't move much. But if I pull diagonal, it stretches quite a bit, see? So if you're stitching on the diagonal, your machine wants to, to pull on it and, and stretch it like this. Whereas if you're sewing with the grain, it doesn't move hardly at all. So that's why all these triangles, at some point you're gonna be on that stretchy bias side. Um, so uh, that's kinda why the starch is gonna be helpful for us. Uh, yeah, let's just trim those guys out. Getting a little, little in the perfection mode on, on this tonight, more than I probably have to. I'm just trying to more than anything else, I want to get those dog ears off. I figured I'd just cut it to the right size as I go. You know, this one, some of these are a little shy of that three and a half, but oh well. I think, I think maybe I should have done it a little bit better scant quarter inch. Maybe I wasn't scant enough. I'm thinking we're going to be just fine though. Ultimately when we're done here. Fine, and one more with the dog ears on. I love just seeing what else we can get out of here. Look, that's pretty cute. Little bow tie looking thing. <laughs> what else? We can go this direction. Get some fun little square with a flying, flying geese coming out of there. <laughs> anyway, I love all these little fun subunits. I mean, this is what a lot of people's you know, designers and stuff. I mean, they're designing from just these little shapes, you know? And you can throw them together in all sorts of different ways. It's kind of fun. It'd be fun to do like a bunch of flying geese or half square triangles or something without a plan beforehand. And then when you have a bunch of them made, then start laying them all out and arranging them and, and seeing what you come up with for a quilt. That, I think that'd be kind of a fun project. I think I might actually do something like that. I'm trying to cut up, I have in my head, like I've been saving my husband's old shirts and stuff that don't fit anymore or just are just old and I wanna cut it up and use them all as fabric. But I don't have a plan for that. So that would be maybe a fun one just to make a bunch of half square triangles or something. All right, something like this. Actually, this guy should be on the side so he's seen. Upright. I don't know. Something like that. So there we go. That part is done. I think we have time for a little bit more. Let's just see what's next. Oh goodness. See now this is what I'm saying. Like this is most definitely on the bias right here and, and this one. So so a BE triangle. Alright, I, I need to see the cutting instructions at the same time. So B E Okay, is this little part here. B, okay, one square, two and three quarters, cut twice diagonally, okay. So we're gonna do some magic cutting too. So we're going to um, have a square and cut it 
twice like that so we get four pieces. That's how we're going to achieve, achieve this. So both our E and our B squares are made in the same way. So this is some precise measuring again. You know what, I think I might actually skip this for tonight. And I think I might just cut out our, um, I think I might just cut out the squares yet tonight because then I can put that fabric away. And then uh, on Wednesday, we'll cut and sew this whole uh, inside part. And maybe we'll even get a chance to sew the whole thing together. Maybe we'll just stay late to sew the whole thing together. Oh, I think I missed what you guys are talking about. So here's our kitty fabric again. And you know what? I don't think I sprayed a big enough area before to cut out the squares. So I need uh, four two-inch squares. So that's eight inches. You know, I might just I might just make this a nice clean edge again. So all right, I'm gonna spray this down with starch and uh, do this. You know, this is kind of fun working this way. We haven't done it. We haven't worked this way before, where we just only cut out what we need for it to do like a little bit of sewing, and then we go and cut out more. I don't know. Maybe we should do it like this more often. It's kind of it's kind of refreshing a little bit not to have to cut for the entire time, you know? That can get, that can get fatiguing. That's just a lot of cutting and a lot of measuring. It's kind of fun to break it up a little bit. And for this, this block, it kind of works. Have you heard or talk about phone books? I, I think I missed, I missed who you guys were talking about. All right, look at all the keys. So I'm gonna square this up. Oh, Bonnie Hunter. No, I have not heard her talk about phone books. Okay, here we go. Square this piece. So that I do have a little cut right there, so I, I'm gonna wanna avoid that. Ooh, this cut. Oh, nope, that doesn't go as far. So this will be a nice size scrap here. Oops, that was. I veered off a little at the end there, but I think we'll be fine. Okay, so this is going to be two inch squares, eight of them. Okay, this ruler isn't as good as my other one for lining things up. She steals her favorite phone books. <laughs> That's weird. Why? To make a. Oh, she uses them for sewing? What does she. How does she use them for sewing? Two inches. Just double check that. Yeah. So this is way more than I need, but we'll use it. Oh, for foundation pe paper piecing. Well, that's interesting. Oh, just sew strips on. Do people do that a lot with their strips? Sew on a paper like that? Oh, for just more of a, like a foundation thing? Huh. All right, so there's, oh, look at this little kitty framed out there. Okay, let's cut this into our smaller units. Huh. Use for two after you, I, oh, interesting. I didn't know any of that stuff. We just got a, our phone book in the mail the other day, and I was starting to think, ah, what can I use this for? Like, I didn't want to throw it away, but I think I ended up tossing it. All right, two inches. I always want to make, like, paper mache or something. Oh man, I'm like wiggling all over the place, but I think we're gonna be fine. One. <laughs> no, 
kind of. Yeah, I'll definitely have to look that up. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, before this blended sampler, I didn't do much with paper or glue or starch. Oh man, I might need to cut another strip. Oh no, I only needed four. I, I didn't need eight. I needed eight inches worth, but I only need to cut four of these. I think I did that one other time. I cut double, double than what I needed. And... Alright, there's another good scrap. Okay, and I think we are gonna maybe call it there for the night. So let's just, let's see what we got. What we got going on here. We got like the outside done. We did it kind of a funny way tonight. Just not not pressing all our stuff and, and not doing all that right away. Like I'm gonna get some of these kitties in the corner, yay! Alrighty. Let's get this, we'll put this kitty up here. This will be more abstract down here. All right, border. So now all we gotta do is, um, Oh, you know what? I'm not done with this fabric. I'm, I need it for the center area a little bit. I was going to do it for for this little pinwheel in here, too. Oh, well. Uh, so, okay, but anyway, we got this outside stuff done. And on, so I'm not going to be here tomorrow or Tuesday, but Wednesday we'll still have a day to work on it. And you know what? It might go real fast. So all we have to do is make four of these units we have to cut these, but I think they're going to cut real quickly. And um, sew four of them up. We might be assembling this on Wednesday, too. I think we can get farther than just sewing these four things. So, um, you know, we might just stay a little later and get this thing done, because that would be awesome to, you know, it'd be such a bummer to just have all the pieces laying out, which is kind of that other block, block uh, 50 one or something. I think I just have all my pieces laying out like this. All my subunits are ready to go, but not sewn together. But all right, there we are for the night. I'm going to flip you guys around. Hello. So here is one of the little half square, not half square triangle, the uh, flying geese. Let's make it flying geese there. We'll put a bunch of flying geese together. So this is kind of the flying geese look when you have the triangles with the other triangles coming out, but we're, we're, um, you know, we're making our little star. All right, that was block 53, guys. So again, I'm not going to be here Monday or Tuesday, so thanks for stopping in tonight. And Wednesday, we will pick this up, and I think, I think if we work fast, we might be able to finish it. But that was fun, doing that weird uh, flying geese technique, so I'm, I'm happy we gave that a go. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, all right, this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. And I'll also, I'll put it in the Facebook page on uh, the Splendid Sampler 2 tomorrow morning. So, thanks again, guys, for coming in. And happy birthday, Gina. And happy anniversary to all of you guys, too. So, uh, I'll see you Wednesday. Have a nice start of your week. <laughs> Good night.